or stiff. Um, well, you get the point. Combination flexes allow you to make two different flexes from the same shaft. The most popular are L and A combination flex shafts, and they're denoted by the manufacturers either A and L or A backslash L. And there's also R and S uh, shafts. Uh, there's other ones too, like A and R, S and X. But the point is, there's uh, you can make more than one flex uh, with the shaft. The uh, the Apollo Ballistic actually allows you to make four distinct flexes with the same shaft. Now, why this why is this important? Well, it cuts down on your inventory because you only have to carry one master flex instead of two. Um, okay. Okay, the, the other thing about combination flex shafts, it allows you to trim in between flexes uh, in cases where a, per a person may fall in between. For example, let's look at the True Temper Dynalite iron shaft. Um, these are available in A and L iron, and the shaft could be either cut to a ladies flex uh, by following trim chart double A, or senior flex by using trim chart uh, double B. Now we got this information off of our, our PDF file off our website, but the same information could be found in our catalog. Just go back to where the shafts are in the uh, shaft section of the catalog. So now we notice that there's a one inch difference in the tip trimming between these two flexes. Again, you want to look over here, AA and BB. For example, on a five iron, uh, for a ladies flex, you would trim two inches. And for that same shaft to make it senior flex, you would trim it three inches. Now the, the regular and stiff shaft could either be cut to a regular flex by following trim chart double A or stiff flex by using trim chart uh, double C. In this case, you'll notice that there's a two inch difference in the tip trimming between these two flexes. Let's say we wanted to make this shaft between an R and an S. Well, we can either trim one inch more than trim chart double A or one inch less than trim chart CC, which turns out to be trim chart BB. For example, we have a three iron, and we want to cut it in between R and S. We just follow along our charts, and it will tell us to tip trim two inches. I want to mention hybrids again for a minute. Let's say we had a number four hybrid, but it only weighed 236 grams. Take a look at the chart, and notice that this is about the same weight as a two iron. Okay, therefore, for tip trimming and length, we need to trim the shaft as if it were a two iron. And if we didn't tip trim less, then the shaft or the club will play much stiffer because there's less head weight. On top of that, we may not have enough shaft left and be forced to use an extender to get our, rec our required length. But if that hybrid happened to be, num number four hybrid happened to be 249 grams, or approximately the same weight as a four iron, then we would trim as if it were a four iron. Again, let's say we had our dynolite shaft, we want to make it an R flex, and we want to use it for a 249 gram uh, num number four hybrid. We use trim chart double A, we go across, we see four iron or hybrid, but we double check to make sure the, uh, the weight it, it uh, checks up. So in this case, we would trim an inch and a half. Another thing to mention, the charts do not tell you how much to butt trim. Again, this is uh, to your desired length. And it would be an, uh, impossible to provide exact readings like tip trimming because many of the because of all the variations of the bottom of board to ground line measurements of all the heads, plus you may need to make a club for a shorter or taller person. So just it's just butt trim to your desired length. And again, every um, 
you'll usually find a chart nearby that tells you what the, um, the lengths of each club should be. And finally, when in doubt, double check the tip trimming with a reliable source. Again, the manufacturers, the component distributors, whoever you buy your shafts from will not give you uh, credit or replacement for any incorrectly trimmed shaft. And it, that's it. It's that simple. Rob, you want to take it away and go over any Yeah, we can uh, start taking questions now. Go ahead and uh, everyone can start typing either into the chat box. It's probably more convenient to go into the uh, questions box, and I'll start reading them off. We can't unmute you by the phone because sometimes uh, folks get a little too passionate about it, and we've got uh, hundreds of people on this phone call, and uh, we can only take one question each. So I know it may be inconvenient to type, but it really is the most democratic way to do it. Jeff, you want to go to the um, last slide while they're typing their questions? Oh, sure. The, um, in the next 48 hours, we'd like to thank you for coming to the webinar. So we'd like to give you 15% off all true ACE Caden shafts. That's 15% off Caden shafts, and they were all designed by Jeff. You must use coupon code 649. That's 649 to uh, get the true ACE Caden shafts, 15% off. And you have to order these by Sunday. We had a customer that was very angry uh, because he ordered the shafts uh, later on in the, in the week, and we really want to try to get this special uh, reward those folks that uh, attended this webinar. So order by Sunday. Okay, so the first question here is from John. Are the new Apollo shafts from True Temper seamless as before? Um, Apollo shafts. Well, Apollo shafts are made by Apollo. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, okay, go ahead. They're, I'm they're reading it just as he said. Okay. There's yeah. a new shaft called the Acolyte 85. Um, it has steps. Um, they're not seamless like the old ones were. They're, they're uh, welded construction. Yeah, you may say something that True Temper does not make that. We, that that's, that's our manufacturer. Hmm. Okay, uh, John, again, what do you recommend for ferrules that are too snug to go up the shaft? Oh, you're going to have to uh, uh, go to our, um, not the next webinar, but the one after that in about a month. But uh, they're designed to be a force fit, so that's, that's the nature of the beast. You don't want them sliding up and down the shaft. Okay. Okay, Frank asks, have you ever heard of club heads loosening due to low temperature or pressure effects if clubs are shipped as cargo on long-distance airplane trips, typically overseas? That's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would say no, um, especially if it was low temperatures. Uh, if it's really hot temperatures, if, if it did get very hot in the cargo bay and it got possibly 300 degrees, uh, it might break down the epoxy, um, and they may turn or something, but that would be the only case. It wouldn't be if they ever got too cold, though. All right, good. All right, your buddy Bill Pardee asks, Hi, Jeff, I do not understand the weight issue on the chart set up. I do uh, not understand the weight issue yeah, on the chart. The, the, um, there's a rhyme and reason why each of the, the shafts are trimmed the way they are uh, by the manufacturer. For years, um, if you had, a, let's say, a four iron from one manufacturer, it weighed within a couple grams of one another uh, from another manufacturer. And head weight, shaft length, and tip trimming all go hand in hand to create the desired flex as outlined by the manufacturer. So if, uh, a manu if a manufacturer deviates from that formula, then it has the effect of either making the shaft stiffer if the head's lighter or more flexible if the head is heavier, uh, regardless if it has like a number four engraved on the sole. That's why with the hybrids, we started having to um, uh, change how we uh, made our charts and include the, the head weights because so many of the hybrids on the market were lighter than the corresponding irons, and it just it caused a lot of confusion amongst club makers. Once we added that, it, I think it's, it's helped 